Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna preview show brought to you by loserpool.com. I'm your host, Harry Simiu, as ever. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way at the beginning because I always forget to do it at the end. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you comment and, and share any feedback with us. It's much appreciated. Follow us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. And this is our very first video podcast. What does that mean? That means you will now be able to watch me doing these podcasts on YouTube, um, on our YouTube channel, which is the Chronicles of Aguna. Um, but for those of you who are listening on SoundCloud, iTunes, Acast, Podbean, FNX, of course, we'll still be uploading the shows here. Um, however, this is just in addition, having had some requests uh, for a video format. So I decided to give that a go this time. Let me know what you think. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, looking ahead to Wolverhampton Wanderers this Sunday, 4.30 p.m. kickoff kick at the Emirates. Um, clashes with the Manchester Derby, which is a little bit annoying because if you're an all-round football man like myself, you, you'd have liked to have watched that as well. Um, so not sure what, what the uh, Premier League are playing out there. But anyway, uh, you know, Arsenal comes first and, and that's what matters. Now... Arsenal haven't actually suffered defeat at the hands of Wolverhampton Wanderers since the 29th of September 1979 when John Barnwell's side ran out 3-2 winners at Highbury. Our goal scorers that day were John Hollins and Frank Stapleton. I bet that takes some of you guys back. Now if you fast forward almost 40 years, Nuno Espirito Santo's Wolves outfit marched emphatically towards the Premier League promised land having one runaway sorry, with the championship title in the 2017-18 season. Now the West Midlands club currently occupy 11th position in the Premier League and in my humble opinion that doesn't tell the full story of just how impressive they've been so far. The early season draws against both Manchester clubs being the most notable of their results to date. Now, there's a united and extremely talented Portuguese contingent within that squad, and that's been key to their success. When teams win promotion from the championship, there's no guarantee that they'll be good enough to survive in this league. But with Wolves, it's different. This is a team who have the quality, I believe, to compete in the top half of this division. And on their day, they're capable of beating anybody. Now, you only have to glance through their player roster to see where I'm coming from. Let's take a quick look. Rui Patricio, Ruben Neves, Helder Costa, Raul Jimenez, João Moutinho, Diego Jota, Johnny Castro, Adama Traore, and the list goes on. By the way, did I mention they've got a few Portuguese players? <laughs> right, so looking at how Wolves are likely to set up, Wolves are likely to start with a back three. Matt Doherty and Johnny will almost certainly operate as wing-backs. Uh, looking to get forward in support of their attack wherever possible. Moutinho and Neves will provide the creative spark in midfield and Raul Jimenez will be the focal point of Santos' attack. Now, the Mexican centre-forward who's on loan uh, from Benfica has only netted three goals this season but has received high praise for his ability to hold up the ball and bring his teammates into play. Do not underestimate his contribution to this Wolves side. Um, in many ways, he's a bit like Olivier Giroud always offering his midfield an option, whether that means dropping short uh, in order to receive the ball to feet. And he's ready to battle for crosses, um, contest long balls. He's extremely neat and tidy when in possession and somebody I would regard as a bit of an unsung hero. I think the centre-forward role is is a difficult one. Um, I, I haven't played to that sort of standard, but I did play that role um, when I was playing football. And I played to a pretty good standard, um, so I can say that. Um, but being a centre forward, and this might sound silly to some, but it's not always about scoring goals. It's about being the focal point of your, your attack. It's about occupying centre halves. It's about bringing other people into the game. And that's something that Raul Jimenez does very, very well. And, and that's where my comparison between him and Giroud comes into play. Now, of course, Arsenal have the slight disadvantage of having to of having played, sorry, against sporting in the Europa League on Thursday, meaning that the squad will get just two days rest before taking to the field, whereas Wolves arrive on Sunday afternoon fresh, having not played for over a week. Now, I know Unai Emery is going to make some changes, um, 
But as we've seen so far, he's made sure that the, the whole squad are involved in every fixture. And so, you know, it, it's not just about being physically tired. It's about being mentally tired and have Arsenal had a chance to switch off and, and recover. Um, they'll only have had a couple of days on the training ground to prepare for this fixture. Now, if we look at what Unai Emery is likely to do um, in terms of team selection and, and, and set up, I'd assume that Bern Leno will come back into the goal. Um, Hector Bellerin will come back in at right back. Uh, I think Mustafi will come back in at centre back. If I had to guess, I'd guess that would be to replace Socrates. So I'd expect uh, Mustafi and Holding to be the pair on Sunday. And then uh, if fit, Nacho Monreal surely will come in at left back. I think it's clear that in Unai Emery's eyes, he's the number one left back at Arsenal Football Club at present. However, given the injury that he sustained and the fact that Unai Emery's been very clear that he will take caution in rushing him back, you could see Sead Kolasinac start again at left back. And for me, he, he, there's, that, that's absolutely fine. You know, he's a more than capable deputy. Um, I don't think he's as good defensively, but I certainly think he's as good uh, getting forward and, and providing support for the attack. So uh, wouldn't be too fussed if, if it's Kolasinac or Monreal on Sunday. I think the Liverpool game proved last week that Xhaka and Torreira is the way to go in the middle of the park. Um, and I expect those two to come back into the team. Now, what I will say is looking at that Wolves team, I think that's an area we need to look to hurt them. An area we need to look to dominate because Wolverhampton Wanderers are likely to start with Ruben Neves and, Raul, uh, sorry, Ruben Neves and João Moutinho in the middle of the park. Um, based on what we've seen from them so far, that's not to say that Nuno Santo won't change it uh, for a fixture like this, but I'd imagine those two will be in the centre of the park. If that is the case, um, you know, they're both fantastic footballers, but I'm not sure either of them are up to the physical battle that Xhaka and, and Torreira could give them. So that is an area for me that we should look to, to dominate and look to expose. Um, I think Mesa Ozil will certainly come straight back into the team. Um, he's been impressive of late and you saw against Sporting that we lacked any real real creativity without him. Um, so he'll be back in the team. Alexander Lacazette will, of course, start up top. Um, again, we missed him on Thursday. We missed his hold-up play, his link-up play. Um, and I just think he's more of a centre-forward than Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now, will Aubameyang start on the left? I'd imagine so. Um, I think he will. I don't think it was in Emery's plans to bring him on uh, last night against Sporting, but unfortunately Danny Welbeck suffered that horrendous injury, wishing him all the best. Uh, but that meant that Aubameyang got more minutes than than Emery would have probably liked. So um, maybe he won't start on Sunday. I'm not entirely sure. I, my guess would be that he will, but if he doesn't, I wouldn't be overly surprised. Um, I think Henrik Mkhitaryan will continue on the right. Now, I've not been that impressed with him this season, but for some reason, Unai Emery really likes him. Um, he obviously gives something to this team that, that Unai Emery values, and that could be hard work. Um, I think he's harder working than some of our other wide forwards or wide midfield players, whatever you want to call them. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Mickey starts again. Um, but yeah, that's how I think Arsenal w will line up. In terms of a prediction, um, I actually think Arsenal have looked really jaded of late. The last few weeks, I know we remain unbeaten, and that's great, but I still feel like we're... We're tired. We're, we're lagging a little bit. We're not firing on all cylinders. And so I'm a little bit concerned about this game. Um, Wolverhampton Wanderers have proven in the big games this season that, well, when I say big games, I mean against the big opposition, the Manchester Cities, the Manchester Uniteds, that they can execute a game plan. Um, they do have quality and the ability to hurt teams. So I think this is going to be a really, really difficult game and, and I don't want to say this, but I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw as my prediction. Um, I think Wolves are going to come there and stifle us. And I don't think Arsenal are firing at 100% at the moment. So, uh, yeah, 1-1 draw for me. Now, as I mentioned at the top of this show, the Chronicles of Aguna podcast is sponsored by Loserpool.com, which is a fantastic new betting game where you pick the loser from week to week. Um, some of you may have played Last Man Standing before. This is a reverse of that. So you pick the losing side, and if you get it right, you progress to the next week. Great game, some fantastic prizes on offer. Head over to their website, loserpool.com, and sign up. Um, 
as a result of our fantastic partnership, I've been asked by the guys to make my loser pool pick of the week. Now, looking at this weekend's fixtures, which I'll quickly run through, Cardiff, Brighton, Huddersfield, West Ham, Leicester, Burnley, Newcastle, Bournemouth, Southampton, Watford, Palace, Spurs. Those are the Saturday games. And on Sunday, we have Liverpool, Fulham, Chelsea, Everton, Arsenal, Wolves, Manchester City versus Manchester United. Now, picking a loser from that, it is not easy because the Premier League is always so unpredictable. Um, you've got Cardiff, Brighton. Now, Cardiff have been poor this season and, and many people's tips to go down. I certainly think they're going to go down. But Brighton aren't an, an amazing side for you to say for certain that, that they're going to win there. Um, likewise, Huddersfield, you could normally pick them as a loser, but they're at home to a West Ham side who have been inconsistent this season. So that's, again, a difficult one. Having looked at this um, at first glance, I'm going to go with Fulham. They're away to Liverpool, um, 12 o'clock on Sunday. I think that Fulham just shipped too many goals at the moment and, and I can't see them getting any sort of result at Anfield. So my first pick for this week is Fulham. If I have to go with a backup pick, though, um, I'm going to go with Southampton. Now, this is this might surprise people because Southampton are at home against Watford, but Watford are in fine form this season. They've shown they can go away from home and pick up results. So I'm going to go with Southampton, another team who are in relegation trouble this season, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, my first pick is Fulham. Second pick, Southampton. Shall I give you a third? Go on, I'll give you a third. Uh, my third this week is going to be Burnley, um, who travel to the King Power Stadium um, on Remembrance Weekend, and it's the first home game since the pass, passing of Mr. Vishai um, and, and Leicester are going to, you know, really be up for it and really want to win this game for their own. It's their first home game since. And, you know, I can imagine there'll be a, a really surreal atmosphere there and a really united one. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Burnley are my third pick. So Fulham, Southampton and Burnley are my losable picks of the week. That brings us to the end of this preview show. We'll be back on Tuesday morning uh, with our review of the Wolverhampton Wanderers fixture. But we've got an extra show coming out next week. It's a very special interview. Um, I won't say too much at the moment, um, but all to be announced in, uh, in the very near future. Until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.